Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Ricardo de Silva. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, conscious of God's great love for us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Now, O Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances which I teach you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all the statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? whenever we call upon him. And what great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
O Lord, who may abide in your tent? O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Whoever walks without fault, who does, does what is just, and speaks the truth from the heart, who does not slander with his tongue. O Lord, Lord, who who may may abide abide in your tent? Who does no wrong to a neighbor? Who casts no slur on a friend? Who looks with scorn on the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord? O O Lord, Lord, who who may may abide abide in your your tent? tent? Who lends no money at interest and accepts no bribes against the innocent? Such a one shall never be shaken. O Lord, Lord, who who may may abide abide in your tent. A reading from the letter of St. James. My dearest brethren, every good endowment and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, when the Pharisees gathered together to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw some of his disciples ate with hands defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands observing the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. And there are many traditions which they observe, the washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with hands defiled? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written? This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold fast the tradition of men. And he called the people again to him and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a man which by going into him can defile him, but the things which come out of a man are what defile him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a man. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. COVID-19 has imposed all sorts of restrictions on travel. And even when one is allowed to travel, there are many things that need to be in place. One such requirement for those flying into South Africa is a travel form that details where you've come from, where you'll stay, all relevant contact information, a declaration that you have no symptoms of the virus, etc. A great deal is made about filling out this form, and one is not allowed to enter a South African port without it. A few weeks ago, I arrived at O.R. Tambo International Airport from New York with my travel form in hand. As we entered passport control, there was an airport official collecting the forms. She stood, stoic, blocking the way to the immigration control counters with her left hand outstretched, palm facing up, as passenger after passenger piled their travel form onto her hand, which appeared a careful balancing act. I was impressed at the seriousness with which measures were being followed to ensure contact tracing upon arrival in South Africa. But as I approached to hand her my form, I noticed something. All the forms were face down, the blank side of the page facing up, and the official's gaze was positioned straight ahead. There was no way of knowing whether or not the forms had been filled in completely or at all, but indeed, there she was, meeting the requirements set out by the law for these unusual times, collecting the travel form. This is the image that came to me as I read today's gospel as we return to Mark after a few weeks with John. The Pharisees entered the room and saw that the rules for eating were not being kept, and they capitalized on this apparent contradiction in the practices of Jesus' disciples. It is not that they didn't understand what was going on. They were trying to catch Jesus out. And so openly challenging Jesus' authority, threatened by the hot talk about town that Jesus was the Messiah, the chosen one of God. And so they immediately call Jesus' attention to the apparent inconsistencies between practice and professed belief. Why is it that his followers were not keeping to the law as prescribed, especially as Jesus is said to be the one who would fulfill the ancient Mosaic law, God's law given to Moses on stone tablets? Jesus' response is illuminating, and one we would do well to heed today. Jesus, invoking the observation of an ancient prophet, in other words, beating them at their own game, recalling the tradition of an ancient wise one, quoting from the Hebrew scriptures, says, You honor with your lips, but your heart is distant. You worship in vain, teaching as doctrine, as law, that which is in fact man-made. Without going too deeply into the historical context, the point Jesus is making is that prescriptions about food and cleansing ritual practices were in fact human additions and not central to the law given by God. This is not to say that these practices did not have their place, perhaps especially in the context of a people who had turned away from God and needed clearer guidelines for living. Rather, the situation determined what was appropriate. And as we will see in the coming weeks, Jesus will repeatedly challenge the stone-hearted conception of God's law and train his followers to see with their heart the essence of God's law, which is love of God and neighbor above all. 
Jesus will shock the Pharisees again and again when they see him touching the leprous, the menstruating, the evil possessed, and even the dead. And this is the difference for Christians, for us. The word of God must be active and alive and not simply an unwavering assent to prescriptions, as St. James warns in our second reading today. Be doers of the word of God, not hearers only. God's teachings or Jesus' teachings need to be embodied, lived out in our lives in much the same way that it made no sense to collect the COVID-19 travel forms at the airport without checking that the information needed for contact tracing had been collected, so too it makes no sense to follow the letter of the law without understanding the principles behind the teaching. There's a real danger to not collecting the required information upon entry in South Africa or anywhere. And that kind of oversight can lead to tragic consequences, making it more difficult to identify and contain the outbreak of COVID-19 that has devastated so many lives in these past two years. But there is a caveat here. It may be that the official at the airport was never told the importance of the document and trained to adequately understand the seriousness of her omission to check the documentation, a tedious process. In a similar way, if we succumb to merely meeting the requirements of our faith without understanding why we do what we do, we run the risk of irrelevance, and our faith will make no sense to those who might otherwise have been attracted to the way of Jesus. So for those who might hear what I have said as a defense for circumventing practical laws, be careful. That is not what I'm saying. Laws, rituals, practices have their place, make sense, and should be followed. But the only way we will be able to keep difficult prescriptions necessary for the times we're living in, both in terms of COVID-19 prevention and infection control, and in terms of the safeguarding of our religious tradition, is if we understand why we do what we do in the context that extends beyond an individualistic understanding. Similarly, when the laws are getting in the way of our practice, leaving us unable to care for those in need, living in poverty and exclusion, LGBTQ persons, the divorced, the orphaned, migrants, those incarcerated, then indeed we must consider whether the laws need to be reinterpreted to remain faithful to the original intention of the law, which was to love God and neighbor, showing compassionate mercy to all. As a friend aptly challenged me a few weeks ago, to be faithful to tradition, we need to be ready to change often. We profess our faith. I believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Conscious of God's great love for us, a love that is compassion and mercy, we bring our prayers before the Lord. God is the giver of all good gifts. Let us pray to him for our needs, the needs of the church and of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Christians, that they may be known for their humility and generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those who hold public office, that they may not seek their own glory, but to serve others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the disadvantaged who have to take the last place in society, that they may be treated with respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community, that we treat others in the same friendly way Christ has treated us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all that did that they may have a place at the banquet of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For our own special needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, God of compassion and mercy, hear the prayers of your faithful people and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This be God Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, 
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, our own and the glory of God's holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He took the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Uti, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, world. have Lamb mercy on us. Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins of the world, world. have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.